Today's video is brought to you by eWin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our eWin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. In order to see the whole chart, I'm going to take us off the screen. So, what do you see there, honey? Um, I see that the performance per transistor was better on the 5700 XT than the RTX 2080 Ti. But, when you're looking at the GTX 1080 Ti, the performance per transistor was much better than the Vega 64 and the Fury X. Do you notice that the number hasn't actually gone up in 10 years? They've just added transistors. Yes, exactly. And then it comes back together at 6800 XT. Although the 680 was better than the 7970. Um, and it was pretty close together with the GTX 580 and the HD 6970. Although the GTX 480 was terrible. Ooh. This is where the big change has happened. Price per transistor. Look at that. That's like going wee. 40... 40, 28, 28, 28. 14, 16, 7, 12. Of course, at some point, these become marketing numbers. These are pretty accurate up here. The 40 and the 28 are reasonably accurate. Um, they've, they've, they've gotten fast and loose with the numbers to keep shrinking them because they've been having so many problems making them really smaller. That is a huge difference. Price per power consumption. Ooh, that went the other way. Performance. I mean performance, yes. Performance per power consumption. Look at that. So for a given watt of power, you get a lot more performance than you used to. And same thing with price. For every dollar you spend, you get a lot more, except for the 2080 Ti, which was actually, on a dollar per dollar basis, the 1080 Ti was actually better. The 2080 Ti was just awful. That was just too expensive. It was. It was stupid. Notice that AMD really lost the performance battle here. They were very, very similar for a long time. And and this is true. A 780 Ti and a 9... A nine uh, uh, an R9 290X, about the same. A 980 Ti and a Fury X. The biggest problem with the Fury X is it only had 4 gigs of VRAM. Um, I did not buy a Fury X. I bought a 980 Ti personally because of the 6 gigs of VRAM. And it was really the Vegas that kind of... Eh, Vega was stupid. Kinked it. Vega still has fans today, but Ve Vega just didn't do it. And let's be honest. But notice the 6800X... And this is true. Um, well, yeah, you much prefer the 6000 series cars than the 5. Yes, but I also will say that it is true. The 5000 series did not compete with the best from NVIDIA. The 20 series, the, five, the, the RX 5700 XT only competed with mid-level 20 series cards. The RX 6800 XT meets and beats the 3080 in a number of games. Not all, but... If I had to say, on balance, which is faster, a 6800 XT is faster than an RTX 3080. Unless you're using DLSS and ray tracing and NVNC encoding, in which case the 3080 is better. Um, but the 6800 XT is a beast of a card. So, and the drivers are solid. I'm just, I am so much happier with the 6000 series. I spent all of last year that's a delivery. Thanks, love. Um, I spent all of last year knocking, in fact, the year before, I mean, the past, actually at this point, two years. <sighs> Let's be honest. The Vega cards and the Navi cards sucked. The drivers are bad. The cards are unreliable. I've had a dozen of them at least. Uh, I've had MSI. I've had Sapphires. I've had Gigabytes. I've had Pick Your Poison. Um, Polaris was good. The RX 500 series, rock solid. Put one on my daughter's computer. No issues whatsoever. Great line of cards. But the Navi cards were junk. They really were. And the 6000 series, I'd put one on my kid's computer. And if that doesn't tell you something, nothing else will. So... 
Yeah, the performance jump from the 5700 XT to the 6800 XT. Absolutely. Transistor density. Got it squared away? Thanks, love. You're awesome. I have, I win best wife. Um, NVIDIA? Yeah, look at that 2080 Ti. They just, but of course that makes sense. 7 nanometer, 12 nanometer. Here's a weird chart, honey. What do you think of this? Performance per... You got transistor density and power consumption. So. Look at that red line. Yeah, it kind of. And Nvidia kind of went. Wee, 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 wee. Okay, fine. And then they they joined up, as far as performance, transistor density and power consumption. So it looks like performance was increased there on the top. I'll be honest. Nvidia likes being on top. You'll be honest. What? easy. Come on, carry on. Some people like to call me an NVIDIA and Intel fanboy. I spent a lot of years with AMD graphics cards and ATI cards before that. Yeah, someone said ATI in there. And AMD CPUs. I sold and installed a lot of AMD CPU systems over the years. AMD at times has had amazing, amazing products that were the equal to, if not better, than NVIDIA and Intel. And then at times they haven't. It depends. NVIDIA's big strength right now is they do have a very stable, dependable driver stack. AMD's is much better and the 6000 series is much better, but I wouldn't touch a 5000 series with a 10 foot pole. Raw performance is better on AMD. A 6800 XT beats a 3080 by a bit. <laughs> DLSS, ray tracing, tracing, and VNC are all superior on NVIDIA. I have a 3090 in my personal gaming PC at home, not because it blows away all the AMD cards. DLSS, ray, ray tracing, tracing, and VNC. That's why I have an NVIDIA card. And AMD's big challenge is how to compete on that stack front because there's more to a graphics card than just raw frame times, raw render times. There is. There is. Yeah. So it is what it is. Uh, what else is here? Power consumption per die size. Oh, mm. that's an interesting one. The 5700 XT was actually pretty efficient. I'm sure. So why do they? They've lost me there because that was actually pretty efficient. So are they saying that the 2080 TR was more efficient than the 5700 XT? Well... Based on the die size. Oh, 12, 7 nanometer versus 12? Yeah, it was a smaller chip, but it still used a lot of power. Interesting. Transistors and core clock? Yeah, interesting that NVIDIA's got a pretty straight line, whereas AMD is like... Ur -ing, ur -ing, ur -ing. Although they'll... That's 780 Ti. Keep in mind here in the middle is a lot of dark years. Dr. Lisa Sue came on board and she could only focus. She only had the money to do one thing, so she did Rise them. Yeah, the CPU the was CPU, the most important. Which, which we have talked about several RDNA times. RDNA and RDNA 2 and the upcoming RDNA 3 is, the fir is, the, is where we're starting to see her fingerprints. Because, let's be honest, before she came along, AMD was making a lot of garbage. They, they've, they had Bulldozer, which was hot and crap. And the Hawaii yeah. XT cards, which were hot and crap. I mean, okay, they weren't crap, but they, in order to get the performance close to NVIDIA, their power consumption became stupid. When they made their R9 295X2 to make the fastest card in the world, the bloody thing used over 500 watts of power. It could pull 600. 
it was mandatory liquid cooling for a GPU. <laughs> they, there was no air-cooled version of that card. Mm. It's kind of like that chip you have over there. They pushed bulldozer so far. This, for everybody who makes fun of Intel and power consumption, this is an FX 9590. And if you actually look really carefully, it says here, 220 watt TDP, liquid cooling recommended. AMD used to do that because that's not gonna help. Uh, <laughs> liquid cooling, honey, lick it. So. <laughs> and then blow. We needed, that's an easy counter. Ding, ding, ding. Cinema wins. So, are there any other charts here? Performance per die size, average, power consumption. I'm only including this article because it's just, it's interesting to sort of look at where we've been and to have a reminder of the cards that have come. Because I think a lot of people forget like the, I wish they had years, they don't have the years on there. I wish they had the years the cards came out. Oh, that would be handy. Because when you look back at the past and you look at the years and you look at the cards, that helps, the past helps predict your future. Yes. So. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.